So good morning everyone. In this lecture I want to present you everything that you need to know about proportions and architecture because after my last lecture so many like came to me and asked me about that because it's a bit of myth that it's like very important in architecture especially classical architecture and it kind of is but on the other hand it's not that important and it's also used in a different way that you probably think. So in this lecture I want to cover all the important things that you need to know about proportions. So first of all, it has like numbers, measurements and proportions. And you would think it's maybe the same, but it's actually not, as you will see like very soon. So first of all, it has numbers. So numbers do not describe a measurement necessarily. And you will see very soon what I mean. So numbers were like very important in Middle Age architecture. Here you see an image of a beautiful cathedral, right? And I explain you like two systems and then you will understand, I think, very well what I mean. So three symbolizes God, for example, that's the Trinity, right? The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then on the other hand, four symbolized the earthly. So let's say every com every common, the common people and everything here on earth. So and that's why you have surprise three plus four are the seven days. So that's like one example where number is like symbolic because it's like human plus God, right? Seven days. And then three times four are the 12 disciple of Jesus, right? So this is not relevant. <clears throat> so this is not related to architecture yet, but I show you another example soon where it is related to architecture. You have another picture of the same cathedral in Reims. And then three is God again, right? And then three times 33 would be, wow, so many God, right? But as you know, like, Three times 33 equals 99. So, and they had the task, they wanted to place a certain number of monks in that church that you see here to sing in a core. So they wanted to create a core of monks. And then three times 33 would reach 99. But then actually 100 is better. I forgot a bit why 10, I think it's three plus three plus four or something. So 10 is kind of a better number, right? Everyone likes that. And they wanted 100 monks. So. And, but they also wanted to include the number 3 and 33 because it's the symbol of God, right? So what's the solution? Ta-da! It's a bit cute. That's why I display it here. And they, they, they created like three groups of 33 monks each singing and like one single monk like extra that's singing in the core like separately so they could like reach 100 monks all together. So it's a bit like cute in my opinion. That's why I place it here. And there's actually like a debate since 19th century ongoing how numbers or in which way numbers like influence like middle age church design more so there was like for a long time in 19th century the theory that numbers like in this way in abstract form without being measurements yet influenced middle age architecture church design a lot but then actually it, uh, there were like theories later that it was actually not so much influencing it nevertheless you know what it means so so abstract number systems and then we have measurement. So a measurement is a number that describes a dimension in space. So we have these two famous measurement systems, right? The old system with the foot and the yard, which was based on human body. So before all over the world, they had these kind of measurement system. Now it's only prevalent in the US more or less, right? But that's kind of the old system that existed all over the world before the meter was introduced. And that's like based on the human body. So for example, the distance of like two fingers next to each other is like one inch and then the distance between the top of a finger and the top of the thumb, I know the German expression for that, and of course one foot itself describing is the length of a foot. But then the problem was a foot had, can have a different length for every human, right? And then also in different regions, there were different foot length all around like what's today around 30 centimeter, right? So and that's why they printed these kind of, or they, they hang these kind of elements on the local town halls here you can see the translation already into centimeters so that's the prussian foot which is equals nowadays 33 31 point something centimeters but it means they they hang this kind of measurement systems on the wall of a local town hall next to where is usually the market so it was important for market and trading right so that you can prove like how long is actually the local foot but of course that's not very international and then the more logical meter system was introduced during French Revolution time in 18th century in France first, 
which is based on the 10 system, right? Meter, decimeter, uh, decimeter centimeter, and so on. And that's more logical, but the disadvantage is it's totally not based on the human body. It's like systems are translatable into each other. For example, like a kilogram is the weight of like one liter water and one liter is 10 times 10 times 10 centimeters. So the units of volume and dimension are translatable into each other and it's more logical, but it's not based on the human scale anymore. So we have advantages and disadvantages for both system. But if you want to learn more, you can read that in the internet. That's not the content of my lecture. But you have to remember a measurement is a <clears throat> number that describes dimension in space. So and what's what's a proportion then? So a proportion are two or three numbers related to each other. And out of this relation creates is created a proportion. And that's the relevant thing for architecture. But first of all, I have to disappoint you that proportions in this systems are not that relevant to create a beautiful architecture. So people for classical architecture always talk about proportions and they are important. But as you will see in this lecture, they're not that important as you would think, unfortunately. So there are different measurement systems and I will go through all in this lecture. And at the very end, I will present one which I find the most useful, actually kind of the most simple one. So, but let's start with the with the basic system. So the columns, again, we had this in another lecture, the Greek or the Doric column that evolved over time, right? And actually that's a development of proportion, as you can see. So you have two relevant proportion in this development system of the Doric column. And for columns, as you remember from another lecture, the basic unit is always the lower diameter of the column. And then over time, as you can see, it became slimmer. So you have the first proportion already is the relationship between the lower diameter and the height of the column. So it became more slim over time or higher. And then the second relationship in this system is the relation between the height of the column and the height of the entablature. So that's the second proportion. And as you can see, the entablature became slimmer over time as well. So the whole system became more light. And that is because these two proportions, lower diameter in relationship to the height, and then the second, the height of the column in relationship to the entablature changed over time. And also when you see on the final system here drawn by Robert Chittem um, of like idealized form of these five orders that we talked about before, or here the three most relevant one, Doric, Ionic and Corinthian. And here it's displayed the Roman Doric, so not the Greek Doric um, order. So there you see that these columns like become higher or slimmer the higher the order gets so that means it's again a proportion of the lower diameter in relationship to the height of the column so here you see all three columns displayed with the same lower diameter of one unit one and the idealized so it's a very idealized version of the roman doric column has a height of one to eight and reaches unto the corinthian order with the idealized height of one to ten so it became more slim and light but as you see in this drawing, this is I created myself, like in, in ArchiCut, I rescale it. So if you draw the columns in the same height, then you will see actually the proportion of column in relationship towards the entablature does not change much um, compare, if you compare the order. So this is the same drawing like that. I just rescale it and then you see the second proportion, the height of the column towards the entablature is actually always similar. It's like in general always like around 25% on top. So let's say if the column has the height 10 for the Corinthian, then you have a 2.5 lower diameter on top. But what changes here over if you compare these orders, is that they become more slim. So the lower diameter compared to the height of the column, as you can see here, that changes. So that means the orders became actually more slim and light if you kind of climb the system up from Doric over Ionic to Corinthian. So it's again a, a change of the proportion of the lower diameter compared to the column height. And then a very famous like intellectual game is the translation of music intervals into architectural proportions because if you know music theory a bit you have like these intervals like terz quart and so on which display actually yeah a proportion so i will explain this in in using actual proportions so if you have for example any kind of string let's say in a guitar or piano is basically also strings right and if you have a string for example here we see it in the height, one string in the height of four, and the other one in the height of five, it will, here are the German terms written, so it will kind of create a große Terz. So that means 
it, w it will make this interval and that relates to the proportion 1 to 1.25 so here you see the the lower row right that starts with a square of course which is not a music interval because it would be like the same note so it's that actually the same note but if you have like one string here for example height 5 or length 5 the other string length 6 you have the proportion 1 to 1.2 as a rectangle right and then on the second row it became more interesting because we have the important architectural proportions here which are three to four which is a quad right so if you have one string length three for example in the piano and the other string has the length four it will create the interval quad and two to three i think is a very nice architectural proportion which equals the proportion one to 1.5 and that would be a quint right so you see already these rectangles become more aesthetic in this region and then the gray ones i included that are not actually music intervals but they are important architectural proportions for example the one to root two which is used for windows a lot in classical architecture that you will see soon and this one is also the proportion for the a4 a5 paper system and it's actually the only proportion that you can use because you want to fold the paper endlessly right if you fold the a4 paper you reach 2a5 if you fold the a5 you reach 2a6 and 4a6 papers is 1a4 so this is only possible with a mathematical number of the root of two so that means actually the paper system a4 a5 and so on has nothing to do with the golden section which is often like conveyed so that's actually wrong the paper system is not at all built on the golden section it's just built on the number one to root two and it's the mathematical only possible number for that and then the golden section i also included the famous one i will talk about this later in this video too which is like 1 to 1.618 basically and you see already it's very close to the 5.8 proportion and then if we complete this row up to what is an octave right so a string one string with a length one and the other string with a length two then you have an octave right and here i included also for architecture important proportion one to root three and if you see all these next to each other you can guess already actually you wouldn't see the difference too much with the bare eye right so that's why i said it's more an intellectual game to be honest and if you inside a room for example you couldn't you could barely distinguish these proportions exactly right so if the room is a bit a few centimeters long one or shorter you wouldn't really recognize it with a bare eye so that's why i draw them all here next to each other myself and on the following slide you see the selection let's say that palladio <laughs> chose so he picked a few and palladio famous architect right that you know called these the beautiful proportions so he said if a room has a section like that so let's say imagine a room the section of the room is always a square and the room has a floor plan like this then he said it will be a beautiful room so for example he picked these six right so for example the basic one is the square of course and the last one would be the room with 2.1 so a double length of the width of the room and in between he picked the quad and the quint so as i said the quint i think is really good architectural proportion two to three and then he also included the proportion one to root two and he did not include the run one to root three i don't know why because that's very close to what he picked the five to three proportion so he said if there's a room that has in a section a square so it has the same width as the height and then it has a length of in the proportion three to five he says it's a beautiful room yeah but as i said in my opinion it's more an intellectual game and you can do it it's okay but um i think you can barely when you look on all these proportions you can barely distinguish them with the bare eye so but for window proportion and classical architecture it's indeed used as you will see in the following so the very very classical classicist system which is not always used in that strict way right but the very strict way would be that you have a 2.1 window on the most important floor so it's not always the ground floor it can be the ground floor but often it's the belly tash, right the second floor over the base and then the more levels you have you can add up the windows one to root three which is 1 to 1.732 right 
and then you add a window one point root two and on the top a square. So this you will find if you look on classical architecture you will find this system very often. Not always so perfect but you, you would distinguish for example the 2.1 proportion on the main of the most important floor and then for example a one to root two proportion on top if you have just two floors you will find that very often. And here's an idealized suggestion from Robert Chichem again where he combines it differently. So he has the one to root three on the bottom in the Rustica ground floor, which is less important than the main floor, which is here on the second floor, right? And he has the one to root two proportion on top of the 2.3 proportion. And then he creates something freely in the roof. So this is just like one example, but there you see, if you look on classical architecture, you will often find those proportions and like staple like, like that on top of each other. So now the famous and very much talked golden ratio, which is kind of a bit of nonsense because it's very close to the 5.8 proportion. And then people say it's all based on the golden ratio. Well, I don't really believe that. And but it's really like a mathematical game. Nevertheless, I want to explain it. So it's the mathematical game and it only works with these numbers. So, so the numbers are written here on the bottom, right? It's 0.618 and 1. And then 1.618 and, and the mathematical game kind of works only with these numbers because if you divide 1 by 1.618 you reach 0.618 and if you divide 1 by 0.618 you reach again the largest number 1.618. That means uh, they are translatable into each other and that means so here the smallest, so let's see it's written like A and B, right? A, uh, sorry, B divided by A is the same as the addition of each other. So one point, uh, you see it here, right? If, 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 you, if you divide like A plus B uh, divided by A, uh, A divided by A plus B. So it's like this mathematical game and it only works in this way. So that's why mathematicians were so proud of this and it can be displayed geometrically in different ways too. Here's the most simple creation of it on the bottom on this stri uh, triangle, but there are different ways to find this golden section like mathem um, geometrically by drawing. There are like five or six ways to do that. And in proportion, it looks as simple as that. So it's a rectangular, as you saw already before, that has one dimension 0.618 and the other one is 1. And that equals exactly the same rectangle as this one. 1 and the height is 1 to uh, 1.618. So great. And, and this looks actually better if you see it in the horizontal dimension. So proportion can be either vertically or horizontally, right? And this one looks like harmonic to the human eye if it's mostly on the horizontal version but as you see already it's very close to five to eight so that's why if you want to work with um <coughs> more useful numbers in for example the meter scale or the foot scale doesn't matter which one you use imperial or metric system and then you could also use this one kind of and as i said i believe the proportion one to 1.5 does also a very good job so if you want a clear proportion in my opinion it does not need the golden section or golden cut call how you ever want to call it, or golden ratio it's also called sometimes in english so it's a mathematical game and it's nice but it's actually i think it's overrated a bit to be honest sorry to disappoint you but if you really look into classical architecture it's kind of overrated what is not overrated is actually the most simple system, in my opinion, and that is what I call consistent proportion. So it basically works that you pick one of these proportions from these music intervals or another one. And as I said, the one in the middle row, for example, 1 to 1.5, I like a lot. Uh, looks very harmonic. So you pick one of them and you just use it consistent in the facade and or the section and or the floor plan of your design. So you basically use the same proportion. And as I said, so you pick one and use it ongoing. And as I said, you can use a proportion in a vertical and horizontal direction, like standing or laying. And actually you can use the proportion that you picked in both ways. So you can use it both standing and laying in facade section and floor plan. And then you more or less automatic get the design that the human eye will recognize as kind of beautiful or harmonic because beauty and harmony are strongly related, right? So how, how did I get that idea? 
This is a very nice but a bit me mediocre house in Berlin. And I walked past many times when I lived in Berlin because I did my internship at David Schipperfield Architects when I was in university. And then I lived near that. It's near Tempelhof in Berlin. And it's an average house that I walked past many times. And I thought, oh, wow, this facade is kind of harmonic. It's like a typical 19th century, a bit over-decorated facade, in my opinion. But it looks harmonic to me. So then first I thought, oh, maybe it's proportion on the golden ratio or golden section. And I took that photo and I laid it in, in, in my CAD program, AutoCAD, and I measured it. And actually I found out, no, it's not based on the golden ratio, but it's based on always the same proportion. So like a consistent proportion. And the, the proportion is, surprise, 1 to 1.5. I hope you can see it here. But all these lines that I draw here, which display like the overall... I mean, we have to look at these three axes in the middle, right? The, the right one with the entrance looks kind of added. I think it's built at the same time, but I wouldn't count it to, to, to the facade because it's these three axes, I think. And they're indeed like based on the proportion 1 to 1.5. So all these three, uh, all these red lines that you see have a height of dimension 1 and a width of dimension 1.5 or 2 to 3 or a quint in music proportion. And since I think the most important thing is that they're all the same. So since this is the same angle, the structure, the facade, it looks harmonic to the eye. And actually harmony and beauty is strongly related. So I think if you want to create a beautiful facade, it takes quite some time to, to find a proportion system, no, not a proportion system, to find a facade that's based always on the same angle. It's quite a work, I did it. It's not like one sketch. But if you wanna take the time, then you have a high chance in my opinion to reach like a harmonic facade and as I said already you, I recommend this proportion two to three like this house it's nice you can also use five to eight then you're close to the golden ratio you can also try it with the golden ratio itself but it turns out I tried it to be a bit ho too horizontal in my opinion for the human eye so that's a great facade and the system I did not invent myself so I just discovered it on that facade <clears throat> but actually a famous house I show several houses here now uh, a famous house where it's applied is this a bit odd building but anyone who saw an architecture lecture more extensively knows it because it's the first house designed by famous architect Le Corbusier so this is his first work actually he designed it in 1912 and as you can see a bit on this house he was not a studied architect right he never studied architecture he was a clocksmith as far as I know and it's really odd and a bit weird but I think it's kind of remarkable. You see already his kind of unique handwriting and this even like kind of avant-gardist, late classical, early modernist something. It's kind of between classicism and, and early modernism, I think, around 1912 it's designed. And here he claims, this is the drawing, Le Corbusier's drawing for the garden facade, that it's also based on the same angle. I think here he used the golden section or golden ratio and but from the backside, unfortunately, are nearly no photos um, available because I think there's a slope on the backside of the house. So <clears throat> you can find pretty many photos from the street side. But unfortunately, this garden facade, which is proportioned like that, um, is built directly at a slope, as you can see here. So it's quite a steep hill, I think. And it's in Switzerland, La Chaux de Fonds. So the, the, the building is called Villa Schwob in La Chaux de Fonds in Switzerland. And as he claims here, it's all designed on the same angle, more or less. So I think it's a good way to create a building harmonically. And very extensively, this system is like displayed in this book. I think it's unfortunately just available in German, but it's a, a it's an incredible, remarkable compendium because it in, uh, consists so many volumes more than 100 volumes it's translated something like the handbook of architecture and in this volume volume four and then halbband how to translate that like like part volume part volume one so part four part volume one it's about architectural composition and here the system that i just introduced by consistent proportion and as you see here for example in these temples and i think this book interprets it too much into every building so for example here with the 
with all these temples that they use the angle as you see either standing or laying so vertical or horizontal you can apply the same angle in two ways right and i think it's over in an over interpretation so i don't think everything that is displayed in this book that was like late 19th century is really like that i think they interpreted too much into it but actually you get the idea by looking at that, right? So for sections, facade, and as you see on the top right side, also floor plans, if you use the same angle, you get a very high chance to create like a harmonic facade. If you use the same angle in all, you have to look off, of course, of these elements that the eye will perceive, right? Like the overall outline or the window proportion or important elements. So not just draw it anywhere. For example, here, the Parthenon, right? It, it's in the important dimensions or proportions that the eye will perceive looking at the building first. So if you set these elements, for example, here, the porticus for the Parthenon compared to the overall outline before, before the dome starts, right? So if you set this in the same proportion, then you, I think you get a very high chance to create a harmonic facade. And as I said, harmony is strongly related to beauty. So to sum up, I think this is, if you understand these music intervals and then the golden section, and then you apply this system, I think you get a very high chance to create a nice building. Yeah, and apply it, as I said, to facade and section, and then also the floor plan of your design.